and here we go this is flash at 20 percent off tonight on the 18th of july 2019 and we're gonna say hey to grim hey mr grimner and his crew over at real liberty media.com the bots and bodies that keep us all entertained with stories and tales and <laughs> adventures in life and we got for your typing entertainment tonight we got uh, my tonight barman beetle grimner moose girl brackets dc anti esmo free enslaved graham z i be don c java doctor 2 meister brow miss kate rob works roams vanna white Vinny, weather dork phantom and well then that's mike in salt lake city in disguise circle hello honey cyborg noodle and sib me from got gromit and jays nines jays kiss moo hmm. ponder gander prince pone sauce sock puppet smart as and old donna van meter who's still in florida so if you want to chat with people those are the people and the bots that uh, are there for your virtual entertainment on the real liberty media.com today and me i got a topic tonight but first i wanted to open up minds and i seen a thing i don't know if i can find it again uh, i have trouble saving links some links are more difficult to figure out a way to save them than others and then there's the VPN thing where if the original link that you're getting is tied to some kind of company that does uh, invasion into your privacy in this country, they won't let you see the link. They won't even let you to connect. So, hmm. but, you know, freedom. <laughs> we're free to do what we're told by God and country, no matter where you're at. And there's people that just don't seem to follow that. Uh, it's just like a common sense. There's, there's no choice about it. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you, you obey the fucking rules that are around you or you don't. And if you don't, everybody can see by looking at you that you're not. What you type on a screen about it. Hmm. I was having, uh, I guess, a disagreement with Mike, right, Mike? Me and you were going at it about whether or not I care about things and I don't I don't really think I do I care about a few things what I can see you know what I can put my hands on but this global fucking California Paris China bullshit South America I don't care out of sight out of mind I mean crying out loud Germany's just a few miles down the road and I never think of Germany Till you know, it, it's it's an obscure thought is what I mean. It's not like a daily conscious thing, German, German, German all day long. But it's right there. All you gotta do is get on a train and go to it. But uh I think my traveling days have just been I don't know, jacked temporarily maybe, maybe forever. Who is to know? You do things in life. <laughs> I don't know, some people seem to live in blocks of years and 10 years and 20 years. And I have enough trouble just remembering what I'm supposed to do today, let alone where I've been for the last 10. Uh, forget all that nonsense. But, no, today's just like a, uh, it's a continuation thing for me. It's not, I'm not goal-oriented. I don't have a, an agenda yeah, Grimder, and here we go. So that means I'm actually live, made it to the radio without having to get Grimder to do the and desk thing or the what's that desk thing. Hmm. We replaced his old way of uh, taking over my computer with something. Any desk, that's what it was called. And I trust Grimder's judgment on all technical computer issues. I don't, I never question him. Why would, you know, why would, uh, why would I? think about it it's his site so he wants it to run as good as it can so i figured the advice he's given me on what to use for this and what to do for that it's top of the line knowledge to have not 
it's not somebody you don't know recommending that you know their uncle so they their uncle will give them a kickback i think it's uh, a matter of honesty this works i know it works because i've used it or this didn't this i tried this and it sucked and he'll tell you that you know don't stay away from it it's it's not good now i take his word for stuff like that i'm because i'm such a novice in the electronic world compared to him but there's a there's some people i wouldn't trust with advice <laughs> I, I must admit that. We we all know who they are. Oh. I don't think I give advice. That's what me and Mike were getting into. That's why I wanted to talk about it on the radio. Uh, I don't particularly feel as though I have anything to tell anyone that they don't already know. It's more like uh, if you know what I'm talking about, I brought it out of you. It, it wasn't anything I put there. It was something I brought out of you because you already know it. And the topics that I that I harp on, <laughs> rant on, rave about, what would you call it? It's not a positive. People like me get called a lot of names, you know. And uh, but the one thing that we are is aware of the truth. And and I think the truth is different for me than it is for you. That's why we can't agree on shit. Because we're looking at the exact same damn problem, but with with me, it's got my input looking at it. So I'm deciphering all this shit with my my experience. And when you try to compare that to somebody else, it, it never works. So I think uh, I just had to pick and choose my uh, topic grounds. There's some things I will not. Uh, bring up let's say that I won't instigate a topic in certain circumstances because it's pointless you know people do not want to know I think what people want is faster phone service and more nude pics that's what people want and uh, the ones that are in politics the concerned about politics they, they run on these themes like right now it's uh, pedophiles and attacking uh, Area 51. That turned out to be a hoax. Some kid pulled a joke, and it caught on, and people went, "Hey, let's let's run with this." And the kid that originated just thought it was funny. And I know how that feels, but I would have never thought of going that big. You know, starting out with a a hundred thousand people want to do this gets the attention of the people that you're talking about. <laughs> That's how advertising seems to work. You know, they they put something that you would never think of two feet in front of you, and then they, they tell you that you want it when you never thought you wanted that, but they bring it to you and they tell you you want it. That seems to change things a little bit. And maybe we all want the government to be accountable for whatever the fuck is in Arizona. But, okay, honey... <laughs> Yeah, maybe we, you know, maybe that's the whole point of this is uh, kids scratched a nerve on a fluke. Because, you know, things things do happen by chance. Not everything in life is completely planned and executed on a schedule, as far as I'm concerned. Man, there's other people that, that believe everything happens exactly as this and exactly as that. Well, they're kind of leaving out random, you know, and, uh, Dumb old dude, I luck or misfortune because shit happens. Oh boy, does shit happen. Anyway, so my uh, 20% off podcast tonight, I'm going to call it Do We. Now, I'm not even going to say you. I'm going to say Do We accept the first thing we hear as fact. And that's my podcast title for tonight. And uh, I think a lot of people do. I think I do. And it's relative to what I like because I can hear 50 things I don't like and not notice them because I didn't like them. But then the thing that I do like, that's, boom, hey, I like that. And it happens so infrequently. Hey, I like you. When, <laughs> hey, sir. Oh, okay, fucker. 
Anyway, <laughs> but it happens so infrequently that I actually like something enough to make a to-do about it that people are very confused about that. Ah, here we go. Now the wife's going to get on me. But me and Mike were discussing uh, how he sees my online personality or whatever you would call that. And uh, I don't think I really internally give a shit about what I can't see physically. So, hmm, I guess it's just all open open to interpretation. He might have been trying to uh, compliment me, too, where I didn't see it that way. But uh, I don't see caring as a weakness or a, I see it as a character trait. And some people are very concerned about other people. And they kind of show that in the, maybe the workforce, the thing that they decided to do for money might express that, like uh, service workers, you know, bartenders and, you know, waiters, waitresses, cooks, people that are in the public, in the public eye all the time. Got to deal with John Keith public. And I tried that when I was in my 20s and I did not do very well with uh, service work. I was retired. <laughs> I don't think I lasted three weeks before they fired me because I wasn't the type of person that understood the customers can say whatever they want and you can't. And the customer said something I didn't like and I told him so. And it was the only job I could find, so it really kind of pissed me off at the time that you know I lost the job over standing my ground over a bully bullying me at my place of employment so to speak and these things that happened in the 80s <laughs> they don't happen anymore because the people have been tamed to behave either completely like total dickwads in public or they're prim and proper and they take the ass whipping they get and tip you 18 percent no matter what and i would compare that to either the big city or the small rural areas and I'm I'm down to the rural smaller even here in Denmark I'm not too big on the city I'm gonna go to the city to, to go visit my mother-in-law with my wife though and I haven't been out of this town in so many years because uh, I like it but I figure okay you know nobody's really been uh, too dependent or expecting of me to do much so I think an invitation from the mother-in-law to go down to visit and see her house would probably be a kind of fair way to be. She's always doing for us. And uh, when Cert goes down to visit, instead of her coming home on the train, her mom will drive her here. And damn, that's one close, tight-knit family, those three women. So you can't really, uh, you can't do much better than uh, Whatever it is I'm seeing, however it affects my appear, you know my my ability to judge what I'm looking at, I'm very comfortable. So I guess it's a rarity with all the crap on the internet right now. We've got lots of bad news. Got uh, women in Congress now. Here's the thing that uh, AOC girl. I brought her up a couple of times, maybe on other shows, maybe not this show, but. I finally saw a link of her addressing a congressman on, you know, on, uh, I think it was C-SPAN or something like that, where they're live, but this was a video of it. Now, it's obvious to me, that girl is so far left, I couldn't probably sit in the same room with her without feeling, you know, just uncomfortable. But, on the other hand, when I heard the argument she was having with the guy and what it was about she's intelligent enough to read so she's as good as Obama or Trump now uh, that's as far as I can go with it I mean she's no better no worse just another mouthpiece and then I read about these these four women have teamed up and one of them's about all this uh, free medical care to whoever I guess the illegal aliens and shit like that and it struck me like a baseball bat in the head that this woman's not a politician. She's a freaking uh, Rockefeller medicine shill. Because all that medical crap that everybody's fighting to, to get 
is the worst freaking thing in, in America for you right now would be the medical help. If you can find a way around medicine, find it. Because if you don't, you're either going to just be a slave to their shit and never get any better, or they're going to kill you. <laughs> that's the experience. That's what I know. Other people have got different ideas. They, uh, I guess they like the idea of being a slave to a, a medical product, a synthetic, something that's not even, it's not even natural. Chemical bases shoved together and mixed together in ways you have no fucking clue what they're going to do when they mix with that third thing in your system that's not supposed to be there, like the shit in Coca-Cola or maybe the, the, some chemical in the cigarette I smoke will react to that pill. <laughs> See, but we're, we're not taught to look at these things, uh, that deeply you know trust the doctor the doctor knows what he's doing well see it took me a lot of years to come into this situation where I needed to know and when I did well, I found out but during the illness when you're not a hundred percent thinking for yourself and you trust in other people's judgments it's a little bit deceptive because the other for one the, the person that that was uh, helping me with my illness was in the medical profession, but did not have my illness. So the only information she had was information from the doctor or what she already knew about it, period. Nobody really discussed any of this. It's just uh, take the pills, you know, like, a, like being barked at by a, a grown-up. Some authoritarian figure. And I remember when I, I was first feeling bad and they wanted me to go to see a doctor. I took a look at this guy when I first saw him. And I said, no, nah, look at the health he's in. This guy can't help me. He's he's useless. <laughs> and uh, what ended up happening, to make a long, like, this is a long story, but uh, what ended up happening from all that was he recommended I go see other doctors to get a, they all had to agree or some shit. And apparently everybody he sent me to go see had diagnosed me with something different than what I'd gone to see him about. So now instead of two out of three doctors agreeing, I had three different doctors saying three different things. And my paramedic friend said, okay, this is enough of this bullshit. <clears throat> and went to the surgeon nose to nose went okay this is the situation this is what's really going on and these doctors are saying this that and the other and the guy listened to her because he'd been working with her in the paramedic business you know trauma shit for years so they knew each other they had protocol and he took me seriously and we talked and in three days I was on his table getting my hernias repaired and uh that see that set off all this follow up and then now you have problems with this and we're going to check you for that so they they figured i had high blood pressure because they were giving me pills that would test me for high blood pressure that gave me the readings they needed to go hey you need these pills and if they had never started any of that shit i would have not known see so finding out it was a scam <laughs> to me other people, not so much. Some people really believe that uh, they're going to see somebody every six weeks or two months or nine months, 90 days, whatever it is. And uh, they're just getting refills on a medicine that doesn't f make them feel any different or better than not taking them does. So, hmm. Well... I guess it's all a matter. See, we go back to that. It's all a matter of your indoctrination and how seriously you take all this uh, help that's available to us if we pay the fees. So, hmm, I think what I went to after I found out about the internet is uh, if people want to charge me a fee, then I don't want what they have. No, 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 no. Being healthy should not... Uh, have a dollar sign attached to it it's just a matter of knowledge and they taught me everything I'd need to know about this subject in school when I was a child 
but I didn't understand it and nobody ever sat down. Here's the problem with growing up. Nobody ever sat down and, and explained anything about this is what you're going to do today and this is what's going to happen later. And I just found out as I went along. <laughs> growing up stayed the fuck out of my business. I don't know why, but I uh, guess they just figured I wouldn't listen. I don't, I don't really know what, what to say about all that today. I've got a lot of uh, sketchy memories about growing up. It was fun. I mean, I had a good time for the most of it. <clears throat> and I'm still alive now, so <laughs> it goes to show it worked. Uh, but uh, hmm. let me lighten this up and see if I can't come up with an interesting way to explain. Do we accept the first thing we hear is fact? Because hmm. uh, I can go round and round with people about the globe. I am taking on a spin about, oh, the round earth, and oh, the flat earth, and, and then ask you one question that nobody will ever answer. I would just really like somebody in some way to answer this question. If you know whether or not the earth is round, or if it's not round, if it is indeed flat, and you know it, what difference does it make in the end? I mean doesn't change the shape of the planet that we're on <laughs> it's you're just picking the right shape whoop de doop de for you that's how petty i think it is but other people swear by all this oh they got telescopes and they got looking out at the stars at night and other planets and this that and the other <clears throat> we have all this wonderful nasa information about going to the moon <laughs> They went to the moon twice, by the way, people, <clears throat> but they lost the technology to return again through regulation, <laughs> because what they could once do, you know, in a garage in Cincinnati in 1969, now takes an act of Congress to get you off the ground. <laughs> Whoa. <coughs> Well, Grimner, that too, it, it, that could just be me talking, you know, I mean, it doesn't mean I am really indeed smoking, but I am, but uh, I've listened to the show, I can't tell any difference between when I start talking and when I quit talking, as far as slurred voice, or the only, the only thing I got is, uh, I got a mind that jumps around from thing to thing to thing, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm very unfocused. I've got a lot of interests, so hmm. I tend to uh, scatter. <laughs> hmm. Well, what I mean, Grimner, is to be completely just bald-faced blank about the whole thing, <laughs> is it, knowing it doesn't change what it is. If I'm right or if I'm wrong does not change the end result of this is a something. Whatever I believe it to be or don't doesn't have anything to do with that thing. But we're taught somehow <clears throat> that uh, if you disagree with people verbally that, oh, hey, there's something wrong with this fucker. He's not believing what everybody else is believing, which is what I found it to be the, the whole point of the thing. doesn't matter what the answer is. We, the answer is unimportant. It's the fight that you are in to keep you on a wavelength of fucking discomfort and blah, 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 like Moose would say. But, uh, hmm. I don't think having an answer to any particular question about something that big matters. That's all I'm saying. And we consume a lot of our time arguing with other people about what we think the shape of the planet is, but how it's relative to uh, anything that really matters. I, I don't know. It just leads you into those those uh, arguments about NASA and Earth and the moon. Uh, what, what, what does it matter? I mean, I don't think it's important at all. But there's plenty of people that will argue with me because, oh, you're short-sighted and narrow-minded. Oh, yeah, I'm more interested on where I'm at than where I, I could never go. <laughs> and let's say... Maybe do some mushrooms or acid. 
I think that maybe if you did enough, you know, hallucinogenics, you might trip and believe you're on the moon for an hour or two or something goofy like that. But so you'll come down and go, ah, that was fun. Oh, I imagine I saw a dragon and everything and I was on the moon, what, whatever the fuck your trip is. And I just think that uh, we've been sold so many movies and books and records and different kinds of music and different forms of entertainment that everything is fucking entertainment. Everything. I don't think people know what serious really is anymore. <laughs> I, I don't think I care, to be honest with you. Uh, life is just so simple. I guess maybe because I'm older now. I'm not uh I'm not doing what I did 20 years ago obviously but hmm, I don't know it's it's I guess it's relative to uh the pace that you're at and the day that you're in <laughs> cuz you know we've all started somewhere and now we're where we are and some of us have numbers on the end of our you know information that's higher than other people so if you're younger or older than somebody, what the fuck does that have to do with anything, really? It doesn't, but we've all been trained to use it as a judgment call. Oh, you're too young. Oh, you're too old. Oh, you're just right. And uh, I think the lesson I learned with numbers with Cirque is it's all relative to what you believe it is. Numbers are all in your head. <laughs> and... uh they don't lie, you know, I'm not saying they're not real so much as uh, how you're indoctrinated to interpret life is how you interpret life. I don't believe that we just wake up, and, oh, hey, there's everything, okay, I know. No, you got people teaching you all along the road. This is the letter A. They start out somewhere, you know, you learn to walk, you learn to this, you learn to that. And then after a number of years... I think uh, in the beginning, it's everybody's all rooting for you and look at all oh, how wonderful it is. But you don't get to remember that shit. You just are somebody one day and then, hey, here I am. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and then you have to depend on other people for information. So when I judge the information that I've acquired in my lifetime, and I base it on the foundation of government or education or religion. All I find is three stories I don't believe. I don't think people are um, necessarily better or worse than each other. I just prefer some people over others. And that's a selfishness, I suppose. I just soon not be bothered with some things as others. Hmm. But... uh to accept the very first thing that I hear as a fact has usually ended up in uh, a bad a bad decision. You know, I should have looked at the you know opportunities a little more clearly. But I find in you know sometimes in life where I did the first thing I saw, like a job or something like that. Ooh, what was I thinking when I hired on to do this? But I had the wherewithal to finish what I start, and then go, hey, I don't want to work here at the end of the day. Go, well, no, thanks, but I ain't coming back here. But not being like Donald Trump and sticking the freaking guy that gives you the damn job in the first place, and then, you know, doing half a day and then say, hey, I'm, I'm out of here. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know, when you do things like that to people, it causes a chain reaction. You know, when you short this guy, that guy gets shorted, and then he can't help his people, and then and it goes on and on and on. It's why the <laughs> it's why the society that we live in works so poorly because all the freaking money is all tied up by just a handful of people, <laughs> and then they they throw us bread and circus, you know, football and baseball. Robin Williams, oh, and you got your actresses. I don't know any of the freaking names. Some actresses out there that are good, I suppose. I don't know who they are. But uh, they're there. 
See, and I'm so distant from all that. See, this is why I think I don't care about stuff that I can't really touch. You know, if it, a movie or a, a thing, it's a thing. So what? Don't care. Well, yeah, but that could be somebody else out there connected to that thing. And it's the could be, you know, well, maybe it is, maybe it ain't. It's not really important enough to me as just like not knowing whether the, the we're on a round globe or not. I don't give up. I don't really care. It, that's beyond the fucking point of the question, though, because you have to pick a side. If you don't pick a side, the side will be picked for you. Like, okay, that's what I was bringing up those uh, four Arabs in the, in the Congress about. Mm. One, they're female. That's going to that's going to upset the apple cart just a little bit because remember back when Hillary ran against uh, old Donald, there was millions of women that voted for Hillary just because Hillary was a woman. <laughs> First woman president. So that means if there was women that did that, <clears throat> guess what, Magtow? Yeah, you guys better fucking run because there's guys out there that supported Hillary too. And not Trump. Uh, <laughs> Trump's part of a bigger plan. It's got nothing to do with voting. It's got to, everything to do with family ties and bloodlines. He just came back from England praising the freaking Queen of England. Oh, she's so fucking wonderful. I, I just love her to death. Why? Why? I don't. I don't see it. It doesn't make any sense. We broke off from England 200 and odd years ago. And uh, here we are, visiting England, telling the public how wonderful the English royalty is. Why? Look at the shithole they're living in. Compare that to the shithole that uh, other places are becoming. At least I read about them. I don't see. Uh, I don't see it with my own eyes. That's the beauty of this game. I get to live in peaceful, quietville, like Mary or Grimm, and then I only have to see the the crap of the world on the internet. I can look at the pictures. I can watch the war from the privy of my own living room. <laughs> isn't that isn't that freaking wonderful? Uh wait a minute. I got oh there's Rob Works. Hey Rob, you got any good links? Send me a couple of good links to read. You usually pick good stuff. I have a real hard time deciding so I don't, then I just waste all that time looking and not liking shit. And then I don't have anything to read. Because <laughs> I was being a picky fucking Jew about it. And decided, well, I'll wing it. But I looked for you about a half hour before I went on the show. But you was not around. So now I am asking unto you, sir. Hey, if you got any good links, <laughs> send them to me so I got something to read. And tonight's show is entitled... Do we accept the first thing we hear as fact? Because, you know, there's people out there that uh, will fight you to the death about the moon landing by God and country. And the older they are, the more the more they, they hold on to it. And the reason is simple. They saw it on television in 1969. Now, luckily for me, I was young enough to see it on television in 1969 but have a grown-up in the room tell me, even, you know, as sneaky as he was about it, I heard, oh, this is bullshit from across the room, you know, in the special chair. <laughs> so there's the memory I have the, of the moon landing. I don't remember seeing it. I don't remember none of the visual, but I remember my father barking off in the corner about it. And wh whatever the guy was or wasn't, he wasn't full of shit. If he said it, you could pretty much believe it. So, hmm. so I've got that much, you know, as far as heredity and memory of family to fall back on is. Uh, everybody has a good and a bad side. I've got a horrible bad side. I'm capable of terrible things. But if I keep my horrible side happy and, you know, under control, then I don't have to worry about it. It's like the way I look at this Danish thing. A few people get a little hot that I, I don't want to acclimate to Denmark. And the longer I'm here, the more comfortable they get with me. But then they start to, to 
give me advice because, well, you know, you're, you're still here. <laughs> you haven't gone anywhere yet. So, hmm. And I've lived this life where no matter where here was, getting comfortable in here wasn't necessary because life was going to take me somewhere down the road. And I've yet to be able to lose that, uh, that impulse. So, hmm. And how do you explain that to a total stranger that doesn't know your, your life history? Because especially if you've got one that's so uh, transient, I would say. I've lived in a lot of places. Hey, thanks, Rob Works. I will definitely read that as soon as I open it. <laughs> but Rob picks good stories for me to read. And I don't know if I'm entertaining or not to some folks. I guess I am. To me, I think I'm fucking hysterical sometimes. But then other times, preachy. Because uh, hmm, getting old, and I'm starting to see what I've done and what I'm doing. And hmm, personally, and on a sin single you know, individual level, it's no big deal. Life, man, it's, it's all the negative shit that we're taught to uh, pay attention to. And that's what gets our attention first. It's funny how backwards we truly seem to be. Anyway, I'm going to read. Uh, Rob Work sent me Smoking Mirrors, The Thumb, Humping, Cell Phone, Zombies, Line Dancing to the July 17th Tango. Wait a minute. How am I going to read that? Oh, there it is. Okay, I opened it. I thought it, <laughs> I, thought I was getting tricked. <laughs> it's a lake. It's a word. So you guys can open it and see it. But yeah, I'm going to read me a link. I know I'm, I clown around when I do the links. And use the goofy voices, but uh, it entertains the shit out of me. I don't know why. I think I'm a funny fellow. <laughs> I think that's what it, what it boils down to is it makes me laugh. Uh, sometimes when I do it too. But we're going to go with Rob Works, Smoke and Mirrors Home. Uh, the thumb humping cell phone zombies line dancing to the July 17th tango. Uh, wife's in the kitchen making dinner. How cool. Uh, getting something, something special is going on in the kitchen. All the doors are being closed. Whoa, she's making something interesting. And it goes like this, Rob. Dog poet transmitting. Maybe it is just a phase that I'm passing through. But something is coming. Every day, it is the main thought passing through my mind. On the one hand, the depravity is bored through the sub-basement and is headed off to points unknown. And you thought they were already as perverted as they could get. Without question, there is some kind of subliminal broadcasting going on across the nation. It is happening behind the awareness of the people being affected and it is coming down through the ranks of control. Police and others are being told to stand down and allow modern-day brown shirts to pummel all and sundry behind masks. It seems unreal. How could it be happening? Once again, I will include that trenchant, trenchant scripture. I don't, I'm not familiar with that word, Rob. From the New Testament. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Spirit against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Wow. Uh, you were Bible thumper guy. You Rob works. I didn't know you were still doing that. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm just teasing you about the link I got. All of what we have been presently witnessing has been coming for a long time. Here is what Albert Pike had to say in the 19th century. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the, dif the differences caused by agentur of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the most, uh, um, the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, 
mutually destroy each other. Oh, I've read this before. It's familiar. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complex, physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. Hmm. I find that to be a little confusing in their delivery, you know, because it's like uh, hmm. calling somebody all of the swear words at once instead of just one. You know, you've covered all the bases. You don't have to say anything else. You're finished. So, hmm, I, I think just when things are more specific, they just make more sense to me. Back to the story, Rob. Just critiquing because I'm such a symbol-minded reader. Now, then everywhere, the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the, world's mi the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will form that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out in public view. Yeah, well, they've been doing it right in front of everybody's face for years and talking about it openly. It's not like, how could it be a secret? What, do they just ignore it? <laughs> I mean, watch a Super Bowl or something and you'll get your halftime show. It's full of all that shit. All that, uh, what do you call it? Symbolism, basically. That's, and when I argue with people about symbolism, I always come out of it looking like a dumbass. They tell me shit like well it doesn't matter well if it doesn't matter why is it there <laughs> you can't have it both ways and, and it just strikes me that certain people they want to justify the uh the results of their enslavement by accepting it you know this is the way it's got to be so everybody will be okay well no this is the way it is so everybody won't be okay and the and the results prove that. Look around you, not not me. I'm talking, to, I'm talking to the unhappy fucker out there, because there's plenty of them. I read about them on the internet webs all the time. They're everywhere. They're on websites and news and videos, and they even write stories. They do all kinds of the negative Nellies of the world. Ooh. They ruin it for everybody else, and uh. And then we get hustled into this concept of fighting them. And that, that's where you go wrong. Ah, see, well, this is my expression of this fight for your rights and fight for your this. Yeah, draw a whole shitload of negative attention to yourself in a social setting and then wonder why the system kicks your fucking ass in. <laughs> it's, it's not complicated. And then what they'll do is they'll attach a word to your behavior at like, well, it's an anarchist. See, can't you can't control an anarchist. Well, no. But what they don't speak about is the anarchist really doesn't give a flying shit about controlling you. Just doesn't want you around him or her. It's uh, It's not an active kind of belief system it's more of a mental state of mind and I go with the Rob and think that when you're out in the world and you're doing whatever you're doing you vibrate something and other people get the uh, they react to you or they don't one or the other if people pay attention to you out in the physical world there's a reason for that and if they pass you by unnoticed well there's a reason for that too but uh we got all these other problems like words <laughs> i heard you say that or hey are, who what are you looking at 
You know, I'm nearsighted. I wear glasses. And when I have my reading glasses that are good for about three feet, I can see everything just beautiful at that three, four feet. And then after about that, it starts to get a little blurry. So if you're looking at me and I'm looking in your direction and I'm squinting, I can't see you. That's the whole fucking point of the squint. But the receiver, the one I'm getting their attention out there, is one of those sissy negative looking for fucking somebody to, you know, to fuck with to prove how tough they are, people. And uh, wow, all I found out about that was, you know, just standing your ground against people doesn't really prove much. So try to. <laughs> Not vibrate that frequency to attract stupid dumbasses to pay attention to you unnecessarily. So, uh, there you go. And it actually, I believe it works. I have been dumbass free in physical life for so many years. Uh, it's not believable. Uh, the last true horrible encounter I've ever, I've built that I've had was the TSA guy in Scotland. And, before that, it was a cop in 1998. So, but people, nah, people are kind of, yeah, since I hit 30, I started to not, like when I got on the plane and that woman gave me that shit about don't speak English. <laughs> because I didn't speak to her, you know, I just waited patiently. And she still find it, uh, found it insulting for me to not verbally respond to her. So, Hmm. Tells you a little bit about her, I guess, in the long run. But back to the story. Thanks, Rob. I uh, felt like ranting about absolutely fucking nothing for no particular reason. Uh, here's what you need to remember. If there are forces of darkness, then there are surely forces of light. The polarities of existence demand this. The laws of, aha, the laws of physics demand this. Laws of physics demand... Okay, guys, get a little demanding with your laws of physics that you can't really prove any of it. It's just what you think. <laughs> the force of light, the power of the avatar, is always greater than the forces of darkness, <laughs> who not only oppose the light, but each other as well. <laughs> The powers of darkness have no sway in any mind unless fear of them is permitted to gain a foothold in the consciousness. Scripture says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What shall we then say to these things? If God be or for us, who can be against us? Evil always destroys itself. No, it doesn't. That's a crock of shit. Evil exists because you want it to exist. Because you allow it to exist. That's why you recognize it as that. If you don't recognize something as evil, how could it fucking be evil in your opinion? So, and that... Bible each stuff's a little pushy, but okay. I do not recommend listening to this whole broadcast. It goes round and round nowhere and began to annoy me greatly toward the end. This does not mean there is not a method here, and what I am hearing from other places dovetails. You will see in the right side menu a comment about how it gets harder after June 3rd and ends on July 17th. This matches my personal experiences so far. Well, see, that's a little bit more... Ah, well, I got something to read. I guess I shouldn't be too concerned. But, <clears throat> I think I'll take a rant break. What do I feel like ranting about tonight? You know, uh, hmm, I thought of a way... You know how I keep got telling you guys that we should bring back dueling? I've got an improvement to my dueling. Okay, check this out. Maybe this will work with you. Work with me, people. Work me. I'm new at taking over the world. Okay? Now, just what if lawyers had to duel in your stead? What about that? Huh? 
I'll bet there'd be a lot less lawyers. <laughs> I bet there'll be a lot less legal cases going to trial. <laughs> I bet you that it, with a result like that, that people would tend to be, by nature, more honest. Because, you know, when you have um, results, like, what do you call them? Uh, like a punishment as a result of an action... Well, it's not a very nice way to run a world or a life or whatever they call this, but it works. You know, so what they've managed to do is manipulate the thinking of the people looking on to the law and not really inform them about the truth about any of it. There's a lot of lies. And what has it been since, what, 2001? The cops are killing 500 civilians a year at the end of their own weapon so now they're there to serve and protect somebody but it ain't the public and scotus told you so so hmm i guess if you still believe in the police you haven't encountered the police yet oh thanks rob ah uh, but it was something to uh something to read i i like to be uh Versatile, that's the word. I don't like to be stuck in a loop of predictable by God and country. Hey, Beetle. I better type in there to Beetle that I'm live. He might not notice. Oh, wait. Let me get my mouse into the right box, though. Ah. Anyway. So, here we go. Type, 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 type. <coughs> and clearing the throat. So. No, we don't have much chatter chitter going on, do we? Oh yeah, we do. I shrank my size down again, and I can't see all the different names. We've got Grimner, I am Lone Frog, Roams, Rob Works, and uh, anybody else? Gooberzilla's in there. What, uh, they got the Weather Dork putting up stuff. And uh, End Civ, that's a new name to me. Moose Girls in there with the weather, and me. Because I was letting B know that I'm doing a show about absolutely nothing tonight. You know, the other day I was uh, doing. Uh, I did a. <laughs> I did a late tw twenty in a perfect world is what happened. I was gonna. Uh, my wife's home on a vacation, so the the house hours are all tipsy turvy now. We're up when we're up. <clears throat> we're asleep when we're asleep, and. I managed to start this show and do it at 8 in the morning because when she goes to work on Tuesday, I'm always up. That's part of the routine to get the house going. And uh, she's been on vacation, so now she's not getting up in the morning. <laughs> Neither am I. So I come on late, miss doing the show, and somebody asked, hey, you got to do a show. So I did a show. <laughs> and the topic that I thought of was the... Uh, Story of Your Enslavement by Stephen, what's his name? Stephen something or another. Stefan, I don't know. I forget his name, but I post the link. And, and I was remarking on how when I first heard the guy speak and I heard that voice on the, on the link, it was informative and helpful. And now over the years, when I hear him speak, he's a bully and a, he's got an agenda. He's got a plan. He's up to something. Uh, he's not the nice guy he started out to be, in my opinion. I thought, hey, I found a cool, you know, cool personality to listen to here. And it turned out to be, you know, no. Which goes to, do we accept the first thing we hear as fact? And uh, usually when I do that, I end up with regretting it later. So jump into the first conclusion. I, I tend to weigh, weigh things out a little bit more now. Like that, uh, those four women Arabs in Congress or whatever they are, communists or anti-Jew, whatever they are, they're anti-Israel. And no matter what they do or say, it doesn't have anything to do. They're anti-Israel. These are Gaddafis. They have to go. <laughs> They'll, they can, hmm. they're not going to change anything. They're a tool in the game that they're playing with us right now probably a test and they can get rid of these four women as quickly as they surfaced so it can't be a secret 
to the uh, you know the governing political body and when they were running for their office that they were anti-semites i mean freaking hell one of them wears a damn scarf around her head like some kind of arab the fuck is there to know and then how am i supposed to take american politics seriously you know after all these years away from america and here i am now and i'm seeing you know bartenders and arabs in in congress making you know writing laws Oh, no, Rob works. That was fine. Hey, throw me something. That was a good try. It was something to read. Maybe when I play it back, it'll have served its purpose in, you know, in the content of the show. Because whatever I'm doing, you know, it's guiding my thinking. I'm following. All. Yeah, Grimner says Mullen X is a douche. Yeah, well, yeah. I was, okay, well, but see, you got to remember that was the voice that I heard to hear the story of my enslavement for the first time. So for a part of me was like, hey, look at this. Look what cool thing I found. So as I've matured in my uh, understanding of what's going on and as far as reality and people knowing it, my opinions about the teller of the stories have evolved too. And I find some people I'm not impressed with at this point where they're at. They started out good, but nah, they're, they're not what I want to do. Oh, what I wanted. They're not doing the things that I would want to do. Mike, because my thing is really to just leave people the fuck alone and let them get along. You know, make the best of your encounters and you know, spend a little money out there in your community and keep the businesses alive. Yeah. Uh, try not to be a pain in the ass. And most of the people I encounter, I'd, I've yet to have an argument with anybody in Freddy Town. Um, <laughs> there was this guy that he uh, he was running runs around one of those old guy carts. He's got to be eighty years old, something like that. He's an older man, and he was he calls me Jesus, and I haven't seen him for a couple of months. But he could have been he could be out of town, <laughs> so uh, instead of panicking, oh I haven't seen the old guy. I wonder what the fuck happened to him. I, I just ah you found him. I just assumed where did I hide him? Uh, yeah. I didn't see him. Thank you, dear. See, my blindness, my wife found something I was looking for and brought it to me because I'm wonderful. Well, maybe not. Maybe to her I am. Sometimes. She'll even say that out loud and go, wow, you crazy woman. <laughs> but uh, I, they say there's a, a nut for every bolt. <laughs> And me and Sir just swap back. One of us is the bolt, and then the other one's the nut, and the other one's the nut, and the other one's the bolt. So she's on vacation now. She gets to be the nut. And then when she goes back to work, she's got to be the bolt, you know, and uh, change her uh, in back into her adult suit. And then as soon as she gets the hell out of there, she comes home and takes off her adult suit and plays with the dog. <laughs> it's... It's the uh, like a transformation. You know, the, uh, the way I see people behave, you know, uh, the littlest of things get my attention. I have this neighbor across the road. And she, uh, her husband and her, I think they got a car over there. I, I've seen them drive in and out. But she walks to town to go to work. And not always, but for months at a time she will. And I notice, I'd notice, and then I'd, cross her path at, on the on the way from work going to the grocery and here we are these uh, the oddest of two people uh doing the cordial wave across the street recognizing the other person and those little tiny changes in life you know i had somebody honk at me in a car because i'm where i was wearing a door shirt <laughs> so and they yelled doors out the uh, in english so it could be somebody i met at the bar for all i know saying hey but i'm wearing my reading glasses so when i'm, I'm out there and everything's you know people are driving by in cars it's quick and psh, out of sight out of mind but i i can remember what i hear but i can't always determine what i visually see Ah, Grimner says we're both nuts. <laughs> That's, yeah, but she's way innocent nuts. It's not like, a, you know, she's not like the female Jeffrey Dahmer or anything like that. 
she's just fun harmless harmless uh nuts <laughs> wow because i must admit in my lifetime i have met a crazy person or two of the opposite gender and let me tell you <laughs> never a dull moment sometimes but uh i don't know i i think Cirque's uh, crazy side is more just the interpretation uh, verbally and, and uh, the way she thinks. It's not she's not such a physical as mental. Did that make sense, Cirque? You weren't yeah. listening. Okay. Well, she said yeah, so she wasn't paying any attention. Uh, what is doors in Danish, Cirque? Moose is asking. How do you say doors in Danish? Dar. There you go. Because they don't have, you don't have an S, right? You don't use an S, plural. No, see? Yeah, their plural, the RS is their ER, but they say it. See, uh, I can't do it. <laughs> well, there you go. See, and then she's explaining her exceptions. Because yeah, every language has these. Uh, when you install English into it, then things change. And they've installed a lot of English into Danish because of the computer world. When uh, when she plays plays um, what is that? Uh, wow, with her cousin and uh, her nephew. Well, they haven't for a while, but when they did, I could always listen to them, you know, because they're talking on headsets. And when she would say, like, heirloom, because there's no word in Danish for heirloom, it's just trivial little things that make me smile because I get a, a little bit of, you know, uh, curiosity about why why I'm not really interested in learning Danish. And uh, a lot of it is, I just don't think that being all that comfortable, <laughs> it's, it's I, I'm not good at that, so... How do you tell somebody that you don't know something that sensitive? Because it's a weird question to be asked in the first place. But then again, the the mindset of the people I'm speaking of is way different than the judgment call of a normal uh, American. I don't get judged here. I there these people <laughs> are actually giving me advice on ways to make my stay here easier in the future you know in case something should ever happen to you and uh wow you know okay but it's it's not a negative thing they're they're in my interpretation of what they're telling me is they're they're sharing ways for me to stay alive longer and where i'm from things like that don't happen you know people that pay taxes in america have the complete opposite attitude of uh, what their taxes are for. This this woman says, I pay about 70% in taxes, probably give or take. And uh, says, I, I would want my tax money to go to other people. <laughs> not not to corporations and things, but to help people. And that, that in itself, it was like, what a conversation to have with somebody that uh you know sells alcohol and we talked about that too said you know this shit's bad for you right well yeah but it's a business it's it's going to be there one way or the other who owns it is immaterial but the behavior of the owner can affect a lot of a lot of things can happen yeah i'll tell you a story about when i first started going over there maybe a couple years ago i hadn't gone to the bar for a long period of time and anyway, they were telling me about this old story. This guy shows up at the bar first thing in the morning. It was in the wintertime. Crack of dawn. Knocking on the door to get in out of the weather. He didn't have any place to go until this place opened at a certain time to let him in. So they, okay, come in. And they got all the bars and tables and whatnot. So they had the guy take a nap and, you know, get a little rest. And he woke up in, in the morning to go make his appointment. And nobody had seen him. That's the end of it. And then the next thing they know, they find him washed up in the, on the beach here, whatever little bit of water there is, dead. 
And uh, it was a big hoopla. Who, you know, how did the guy die? But they were the last people to see him. And people had come here afterward to find him. And then, of course, they found out he was dead. And that was as much of the story as I really cared to, you know, listen to. I, and I, the rest of it didn't stick. But nobody killed the guy. He uh, had some kind of like a learning disability, it turns out. Because the middle start, I don't remember all that, but the end part of it is. Uh, and they think that he just got lost and wandered off and tripped, bumped himself out and drowned. That was the gist of what I heard. Okay, and that's a big, that's the biggest thing that I've heard since I've been here. There's uh, bikers all over the freaking place too, <laughs> and, and I the the bartender that owns the bar says to me, ah, "I grew up with all these idiots. All these idiots. I know who they are. <laughs> they, I they don't scare me. You know, I know them all. What's there to be afraid of? Oh yeah, because uh, I didn't grow up and continue to live where I was raised, so I don't have that going back to my schoolyard friends kind of life. We all scattered to the winds people went to the military and died and got crippled and i had a neighbor do that oh man he was gung-ho he's gonna go into the marines and be a big shot in the marine corps and he came back uh, what happened is their car had run out of gas and these clowns were pushing it and got rear-ended so he lost his legs from below the knee both of them and the military paid him off you know for the accident and wow I would nothing in this world but is valuable enough to make me want to give up my ability to walk and see I had that happen you know not to me but I had that happen in my life where I could see look this is what happens when you're careless and you, you don't look you don't think about what you're doing completely when you're in a jam so you know when you're on a two-lane road there's there's a time to not push the car <laughs> you got to think about what you're doing and apparently these guys didn't think it through and they just decided to take their chances and it didn't work out so but why him who knows see then that stuff all comes up wow how do you get yourself into a, a position in life to be maimed that badly <laughs> Uh, is that bad luck or maybe was that good luck this because I didn't get along with the guy in the first place and his brother was a bigger idiot but the accident kind of leveled the playing field for him and he wasn't such a big badass anymore and his his brother was uh, not so willing to fight for the both of them because <laughs> you know his brother was crippled now with two um, what do you call those fake legs? Jeez, uh, prosthetics. And walking with crutches. Oh, it's horrible to see these, you know, big tough kids just get all fucked up like that and, <laughs> and end up being equal. Yeah, so, but maybe that's what that was about was life was treating them how they treated life. <laughs> and they were not nice people until the wreck and, the, you know, they got the settlement and, then all of a sudden everybody was way different so do you need to lose your legs to become a nice person <laughs> some some of us do obviously now so far through this episode of my life I have not been one of those people that needed to be maimed to get my attention unless you count the blood pressure medicine episode that blind trust to the authority and my partner wouldn't lie to me. What? Why would she do a thing like that? Crap. And uh, lying really wasn't what these people were doing purposely. But when you look at the end result, nobody bothered to look beyond. This is what we recommend. Why? Because we recommend it. Shut up. Wait a minute. See, and then you get to wait a minute and then nobody listens any further and we have every right to tell these doctors no but when you try to do it 
everybody else joins with the doctor against you, you're refusing medical assistance, right? Doctor's orders or some shit like that. Well, the conditioning made, made me believe that all these people, because they had jobs and they had position, that they knew what the fuck they were doing. And what I learned in it is they're guessing just like I am. All of us. We're, we're believing stuff. You know, people tell us shit. But how do you know what the fuck the truth is? Really, I don't. I found the truth by uh, challenging the story. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes what I thought was truth turned out to be absolute bullshit. But until the story was challenged, nobody gave a fuck. Now we got people going, hey, you know the United States never went to the moon in 1969? We just celebrated the 50th year anniversary, and I'm heartbroken because these people don't believe it ever happened. What is wrong? See, why do you, does your personal reality get shaken because the government that holds your paperwork lies to the people that pay for it? And you don't pay for anything with money. This is the illusion. You, you pay for it in your time, your labor, your effort, your consumption. Your whatever you do involves a lot of other people, whether you know it or not. Even if you live, even if you live like I do in a small town and this, that, and the other, and you're isolated a little bit, you don't go out much. Still, when you go out and you interact and you do your little bit of spending, it accumulates. Other people are doing the same damn thing you're doing. Well, the very thing that has. Uh, offered us all these great things like indoors, electricity, you know, shelter, um, comforts, um, heat, cool, whatever the hell you're looking for at the moment. The same things that helped us get here are the same chains that we're wearing because we, uh, we believed the stories instead of questioning it. And now it's their governments are going to get so tight with the internet that they're pulling off all the anti-vaxxed information. You can't even get it. It's not going to be there. Twitter and all the big platforms, the Facebook and the Google and the Schmoogle and all those badass. Hmm. So they're going to silence the opposition on the Internet so that people in the future won't find out what amongst our little groups, all scattered all over the freaking world, we got these little pockets of radio people and uh, chat rooms where people gather 40, 100 to a, at a time. And they all know each other. You see why did, did the same thing. But there's got to be plenty of these places. And if there's not, there should be. Maybe that's the whole point. Maybe that's what people are lacking is... Their addiction to the Facebook and the Twitter is so consuming that they don't really understand smaller is the best way to go. You stay, you stay more informed when you know people by their first name, like Rob. Rob works. I say, Rob, can you send me a link? And you know what? He did. He did what I asked him. So judging the link quality would have been a little bit you know, petty for me. And he even said, hey, I'm sorry about that. That's not what I thought it would be. Yeah, it's okay. It, it's all. Um, I was telling and well that earlier this this afternoon is I'm not really convinced that people give a shit what I think about anything. That I don't even think I care. That's why I'm just talking about it. I've got this, uh, I guess, ability or gift or whatever to randomly just pick a topic and start negotiating it at will. Some nights I do better than others, but there's times where I've got nothing, and I just say, oh, okay, let's call this a show. I'm finished. And then there's other times, like the other morning when I did my uh, late twin uh, in, in a perfect world without Vinny. I was going to do one hour. I read some stuff, and then I found myself, hey, you know what? This came to mind, and that came to mind. I'll do another hour. And my wife teased me about it. She says, I thought you were going to stop at an hour. I went, yeah, well, so I didn't. Yeah, just like everything else, it's subject to, to the mood I'm in. That that makes a 
big fucking difference in life. I think everybody's like that. And we don't all seem to we don't all seem to connect on that particular topic. You know, it's you seeing me and me seeing you is not the same thing. <laughs> it's two completely different things happening at the same exact time. And when you try to explain it, there you go. Then it all goes to shit because you see your way and I see my way. And what we're, uh, I harp on this a lot, people, but what we're not taught, because you got to be taught this. It doesn't seem to come naturally to us to understand the other guy. Understanding the other guy. What the fuck are you talking about? I, I'm doing this. <laughs> Hold my beer. Watch. I'll show that prick. And it's it doesn't really work that way. When I go out in public, when I think about the radio personality I must seem to have, and I compare that to the personality that I got when I'm trading with somebody in a, a store, in a retail outlet, I never go out of my way to make their fucking day more difficult than it already is. Because customers can be a royal pain in the fucking ass. I know that from being a salesman. <clears throat> Oh, Grim's got something on. I think I'll go into a reading mode for you people and get off my rant. There, give you a little time to think that last bit of nonsense through. <laughs> but really, I think that, uh, you know, we're in one way in, in this respect and in this situation, and then in a different situation, well, your behavior's different. It, as if you were the same person all the freaking time treated everybody exactly the same way then i don't think you, you would be real there'd be something off about you even miss mary as wonderful as she can be finds things that irritate her and she's not shy about it <laughs> but she's not an argumentative you know violent wackadoodle she's just a short little woman with a, a lot of opinions and some of her opinions, boy, I think the uh, the medicine stuff that she tripped over, that helped me a lot. That made me feel more secure about my own personal decisions. Because I met her after I did this. This All the internet stuff came after. I went, I ain't doing this shit. Fuck these people. The most I'd been online to do at that point was to play games and maybe uh, talk to uh, my daughters or something on uh, Facebook. And that was about it. And as soon as I ditched Facebook, I, the kids got pissed off at me. They're still mad. They're going to be mad for it, at me for the rest of my life. They're going to show me. Mm. Which is kind of a, well, I guess it's kind of a not good thing in a, in a sense. But at least uh, the kids ended up to be like me in some respect where they can at least stand up on their own and they don't need other people to approve of what they do and as weird as that may sound it's really uh, some people's kids die and they don't get you know, they don't get the chance to be mad at each other <laughs> so fortune in the way I look at fortune fortunes with me is everybody in the game is still breathing and they're just strong enough people to say ah, I'm still pissed off I don't want to talk to you about this because people say words and that's what this whole um, problem with my children is, is uh, I said words. And the day that, that I said the words, I knew I was going to say these words. So my instructions to everybody around me on the way to the bar was, don't have anybody call me. I do not want to be speaking to nobody. I want to get drunk and just fuck this day off. But <laughs> you know how people are. They're always willing to help. And sure enough, I was talking and somebody had the phone connected to my kid. My kid heard what I said. And it wasn't pleasant. <laughs> so she's a little bit mad. And then when I shut down the Facebook thing, that really tripped her. The little one. The older one, that nah, she's more used to me being away. But I think the, the family unit separations that I've been through in life gave me this kind of an edgy not being stable thing is kind of cool I'm used to it you know what oh no no I don't mean it like that because I'm not that that's what I mean I'm not that in 
fucking connected mentally with other people that if they don't do what I want, blah, blah, I don't give a fuck. If they don't want to talk to me, then fine. It doesn't, I'm not hurt. You know, I just, I kind of appreciate that kind of a, you know, backbone in somebody that says, you know what, you pissed me off and I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to you no more. And if that's the decision that you make about somebody, it takes a lot of nut to stand up to something like that. Most people will break and they'll call or, or write or give in somehow. And I like the idea that I raised some people on this planet that were strong enough to make up their fucking mind and take their ass whipping no matter what. Because that's what life's turned into. If you're weak, wow. Life will chew you up and spit you out. And if you're, uh, I think if you're too strong, then you don't really know. You know, you're missing something and you're, you're not seeing a big part of the game that you need to see. And that doesn't mean that you have to be weak. It means to, you have to witness weakness to understand what it is. Make up your own mind, you know, your own personal opinion about it. But things are general, you know. You're going to look at this event and see it in a similar fashion, just a different level of degree, I would suppose. But, you know, people, they feel let down by things I've said and done over a lifetime, sure. But, you know, who have, well, I guess there's a lot of people that haven't. They haven't had the uh, life experiences are different. And, um, hmm. wow, I started out. In 1959, <laughs> a whole another century behind me, you know, the 1900s, like most of you guys out there. And a few, you know, I don't know, I guess there's no young folk that would be uh, spending time doing the internet like this. Doesn't hey, make any sense. Old. Yeah, sir, you were born in 1977. I'm young. Yes, you're young. Hey. Yeah, but you weren't born in 2000, dear. <laughs> okay I picked a sore spot for the wife <laughs> see what I mean Moose no matter what I'm always uh, the things the topics the way that I look at life always insult somebody doesn't matter who I'm speaking to or what it's about whatever my side of that issue is will usually bring rain so hmm. uh, I have to put my uh my good guy suit on to be in public or people think I'm insane. And usually because I, I cannot, uh, hmm. I don't see any point in arguing about certain things. You either, you know the truth or you don't. And most people truly don't. They have no fucking clue. What they know is what the, the government, whoever their government is, has convinced them to believe. And, like with the uh, baking soda. Medically, okay, this is not an opinion based on some crazy wackadoodle idea. Cancer cells do not thrive in an alkaline environment. The level of that alkaline environment, you can control it. Acidy, fatty, freaking fast foods and shit and packages and all this garbage we take, it's all got the the chemicals in it that make the cancer active but that alkaline and baking soda would say neutralize that effect so there's the no chance for that al for that cancer to survive in that alkaline state there's a test to even you can get testers to see if you're using enough maybe you can use too much but uh, at my weight the recommendation was a tablespoon in a glass of water, for example. And that's what I do. Shoot it in a glass of water. Nothing to it. So, like salty water. It's not painful or horrible or nothing like that. But uh, that's one of the questions people will ask. You know, well, what if you got cancer? So, I don't believe I'm going to get cancer. There you go. Right there. I don't believe I'm going to get cancer. Now, to make a statement of that kind, in my opinion, takes you have to have some kind of knowledge to back you up. What's your knowledge to back you up? And I told that story already. The cancer can't survive in this because this is what's been proven. This is what was really the truth. And all this Rockefeller medicine shit, 
every area of it turns out to be just a way to make money for some people and keep the rest of us dependent and poor. There's so many layers to this cake. Uh, you scratch off one layer, the banking, then you got politics. Okay, then you get past banking and politics, then you got education. <laughs> then they tied education to politics. So, wow, now you got a whole other problem with that. So no matter what problem we solve in life right now, say like my problem was, oh, I need to take a little bit of baking soda in my water in the morning when I get up so that my body will more than likely not ever get cancer. Now, what are the uh, symptoms of cancer? You know what I think the symptoms of cancer are? You're not going to like this, people. The symptoms of cancer is you go to the doctor because you have a checkup, and the doctor says, look, look at what we found, cancer. What they don't tell you is what you're eating, your diet, is what's fueling the cancer. <laughs> so you get sucked into this land of ignorance where, you know, oh, don't listen to those healthy nut people. They're a bunch of wackadoodles. Don't. Medicine is where it's at. Listen to the professionals. Big pharma. Huh, government, all that shit. Now, that's what I went through. Maybe that's not what other people went through. I have no idea. But I still, to this day, remember when, uh, before I had my hernia shot, uh, and I had that shot in the hospital, nobody asked me for consent. I just, all I just remembered this nurse with a needle, and the next thing I know, ah, physical relief from this agony but consent where was that and I don't think I would have argued with them after they gave me the shot any damn way if they would have asked for the consent at that point I would have given it to them because hey this doesn't hurt anymore so the way that things are done to me in life this is I guess an explanation of that kind would kind of help you understand why Oh, I do not trust the system at all. And sometimes the system is uh, capable of doing the right thing. It's just they do it in the wrong way. Because I could have had any kind of fucking reaction to their synthetic opioid that anybody else had. Luckily for me, it was minimal. I just had some vomiting and discomfort. But it did ease the pain from what was happening to me. So... You know, it's easy to complain, you know, years down the road when you're still alive about how shitty this was when you went through it. But I think <laughs> that's pretty much how how that works for all of us. You know, you're uh, you're traumatized physically, and, and then you got a bunch of strangers telling you all this jibber jabber. You don't even fucking know what any of it means. And then they got this wackadoodle that's gonna put you out on a table and chop you up and change you into something else now you got that option or croak so hmm, guess which one yeah I had you know go with the go with these people and trust them or definitely croak there was it was physically uh, that uh, traumatic this at, at the end of it so but here I am all these years later if you didn't know that ever happened to me I I don't physically show it like I don't have any gimp or like uh, amazing discomfort to walk or anything like that but I did have uh, four hernias ex like just before they explode I had them surgically altered uh, two at a time in, in a six week period as soon as six weeks passed I was on the table again for the other two because it turns out I had four of these fucking things and uh I don't know how I'm still alive to this day because of that, but somehow I managed to get, <laughs> see, life, I, I don't know, something in life just makes sure I keep breathing, because I don't participate, like I was saying with, with Ann Weldon, I don't particularly care, you know, I don't, to this day, I don't give a shit about medical insurance or doctors or, you're going to run me over with a car, I don't, fuck it, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, and if it hasn't happened to me by now, well, 
I'm just holding up, right? <laughs> but care about it. Nah, that's a lot of effort. What I am able to do, though, is to look at, like, the Mullinex thing and recognize that I see the guy in the beginning as a lot of help, but over the years, he seems to turn, have turned into a douchebag. And then I, I mentioned this on the radio, and I got Rob Works and Grimner, who I, you know, I appreciate you guys' opinions about stuff. You know, I have to agree on every fucking thing to get along with me. But the big things that matter, you guys, uh, you seem to hold the same opinion. And when I read that, you know, on the fa on the R R L N feed, what you thought about the guy? Well, I felt more uh, comfortable in my own per personal decision because I don't speak about these things to people. I just think about them. But mm, what you know, what I think about another guy that does links, I don't see how it's important. It's just an opinion. Until you start seeing other people give it back, <laughs> and then then it grows. See, and then we get that that wavelength thing that Rob talks about starts to become part of my awareness. Where whoa, this thing could work. You know, we could do amazing things in life if we didn't have politics and religion and education in the forefront. But there's so many people that are, what I guess. Religious is the right word for it. They, they, I don't even know because these numbers are pitched to me on the internet or in the newspapers or the television or movie or whatever it is, whatever source of in, information. And they pitch these numbers of 65 million Catholics, you know, uh, 15 million Jews, 100 million. Muslims, all this number shit throws that all the time. Number, number, number. And then it, what it does to me, I think, is it distracts me from my personal reality where I could go to town for a week and not see anything but white people. But then on the other hand, it's the summertime right now. So there's a little bit of uh, uh, tourism going on. Got some people from out of town visiting and the weather's good, so more people are out and about in the first place. And in the wintertime, it's a little colder, so not so many people like to walk around in that weather. Well, here, it's, it's more than what I was would expected do. Uh, and so a lot of folks ride a bike, and uh, a lot of folks drive, but there's still a, a good number of us walkers. <laughs> I'm a member of the walking society. <laughs> but... No, I promise, sir, that uh, I'm going to go with her to go go visit her mom down at her mom's house. Her mom's a trip. My mother-in-law and me get along just fine. Uh, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, nephew-in-law, all the cousins-in-laws and the uncles and the aunt. Oh, he, she's got one uncle and three aunts. And I get along great with all these people. And... You know, we, we don't see each other all that often, but when it happens, they're just, <laughs> it's a pretty good thing. And I used to dodge family things because, uh, I don't know, people that I'm related to just had an edge to them. You know, and, and a lot of memories about what I did <laughs> when I was young. So uh, being around people that don't know your, your personal freaking first 20 years, I guess that kind of helps because explaining my past to other people will definitely raise an eyebrow you know it, it's a it's a unique kind of tale it's like no that didn't happen okay and then you just stop because okay that didn't happen and that turned into never talking about it <laughs> i i think i talked to when i was a teenager maybe once or twice about something that happened and after that nothing not uh not a confidant in the world about personal uh, history because I was a young teenager and everybody I associated with was older than me, three, four, 20 years older. <laughs> that went on until I was 19, 20 years old. Everybody was like uh, very accepting of me because I could hold the conversation. It's probably why I do the radio now, missing the old days, you know. 
uh, being a salesman. Oh, the, <laughs> those days were fun. I enjoyed it. That's why I'm so disappointed in America today is because it was so good to me when I was in it for the, wow, well, the first 25, 30, 30 years. And then after about 1980, give or take, there's a little bit of a dip from 80 to 90, but 90 is the end. Right there. Bill Clinton, it all went to fuck. And I'm not blaming Clinton. I'm just saying at that period, and I, I do my history like that in blocks of president. <laughs> the, the 80s was Reagan. I remember that morbid, nasty bastard on TV. With his greasy, slimy, dyed black fucking hairdo. Looking like Donald Trump on, you know, mashed potatoes. But, uh, eh. And then we had Clinton. Oh, boy. The only good thing Clinton did was keep the rich people's taxes up. I think that's why things were, were as good in the, uh, and that was the 90s. As good as they were. There was a lot of work in the 90s. I took a lot of jobs in the 90s helping other people doing shit that I didn't know how to do, but I learned a little bit on, on just following directions, you know, using certain tools for certain shit. But electrical jobs and remodels, plumbing, all kinds of fun shit. And when you're, you know, when you're <laughs> in your 20s, bouncing around from place to place like that, it, that's kind of a fun way. It was fun for me. I would say... How do you recommend that to somebody else? You know, in in the present, you can't, because the, the the world that I'm from is so different than the world I'm in today. If uh, if if I hadn't learned what I'd learned in my own day, though, I would be completely helpless in the modern society and and a victim to the state. I think, but I got talents or something that are more valuable <laughs> they're more valuable than words can explain and there's something about life that just uh, if I'm supposed to be alive this is what I think I think if I'm supposed to be alive I'll be alive and then when it's done it's done and I don't have any concern about when that is it's just gonna be when it's gonna be and in the middle I just do the things that keep me out of harm's way so I don't push the trip you know, to end faster. And it's possible to do that. I mean, I had a lot of friends. Uh, Kelly just hung her fucking self. <laughs> Steve Dallas had to, he ran into a freaking oncoming truck. So, and yeah, he was too good of a driver, this, that, and the other. No, he didn't, that wasn't an accident. And that man had so many problems, you know. I, and these are the kind of people that uh, I really liked. You know, they had troubled personal lives. But they were good people. They just didn't. They just didn't treat everybody very good. <laughs> it's kind of strange, I suppose. <clears throat> but uh, I, I think I come from a like a, a society of people that mistreated each other. You know, L.A. had its good and its bad side. It, it was recognized as a tough place to grow up and. It, yeah, there was some pretty tough shit that did go on. But if you do the suburbs correctly, there there was signs. You know, stay away from neighborhoods that looked like this. You know, avoid certain parts of town. It was just, I don't know, something I was taught to recognize by living through it, I suppose. And being able to recognize a good or a bad thing. You know, maybe that's what's wrong with life now is where we don't judge things properly no nah, things are judged by um price <laughs> availability speed but quality and you know durability and shit like the things that used to make me money with words was i would paint a picture of a tool or a product gas holes or a, a coupling you know, the couplings to connect it, whatever it was. And I would just tell the guy, I'd look at the thing and then describe it to him. And by the end of the thing, he'd be asking me questions because these were things they needed to complete their work. Without these tools, their work couldn't be done. So I had a captive audience, but I had a new product 
that they hadn't tried yet. So what I thought of is putting a few dollars in the mail and sending them a sample. So I made a deal with the guy. And they said, look, if they got more than 20 trucks, can I send them a sample, a four-inch sample? And you take it out of my commission. He goes, and well, what if you don't get a sale? Well, then I'll pay for it. You remember? He said, you sure? It was like, I don't know, a couple of dollars way back in 1977 or 8 or whenever that was, 77 or 78. But it was listening to other people that got me these ideas and gave me the like the hmm, the gift of gab to go to the boss and, and pitch him. Hey, you got me pitching these people. I'm going to pitch you. This is what I want to do to make my job easier. You for it? Yeah. So when you're in life and you learn how to give and take and not just demand shit, it seems to be um, more successful, I would say. My brother is supposed to be more successful financially than I am, but he's not an easy person to uh, get along with. So I choose the not getting along and staying apart rather than tolerating, you know, for the benefits, that's not how I live. So, you know, uh, to those of you out there who have their preconceived notions, <laughs> it's fun to read your shit, I swear. But I've got my own shit to say back, you know, so this isn't like I'm uh, not really complaining because it's a, like, mm, a free-for-all in words on the Internet. And some people, you're more free to behave in this respect than others. And <laughs> some people just make it so fun. And I'm trying. I'm still. I have got. I had him on Iggy for a week. I think I took him off again. But nothing changes. And that's my interpretation of what I'm seeing. So, whether the Iggy thing is embarrassing or not, sometimes... Out of sight is out of mind, and uh, there's a time and a place. And some people just do not mix good enough <laughs> to get along in a public, uh, in a society, because one of them won't stop telling the truth. And I'll bet none of you people will figure out who's telling the truth. <laughs> I think we're both telling the truth, actually. It's just seeing it from two different sides of the this bent coin that's really fucking it's fucked up so bad. But it's your coin, you know. And I'm not gonna no, it's my coin. You can't tell me it's a bad coin. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but it led me back to that AOC girl, the uh, anti-Semite, the one that is all out of pocket and shooting her mouth off and says ignorant shit. And she is a real lefty. I'll give you that. Whatever the fuck judgment comes to that left-right crap, I don't give a fuck. The politicians, they all belong in the same boat. Let them figure out how to sell it. Leave me the fuck on the water, out of the water on the shore. Go whale. <laughs> but I still took the minute and I thought, wow, so all this shit because she's against Israel... And nobody's going to, well, they say it by calling her anti-Semite. Wow, well, we're, we're screwed. And then four of them, huh? Four little women. Got the president's ear. Wonder why. Doesn't it sound like kind of like a setup to you out there that have experience with these political strategies where they make things appear to be happenstance when they're, they're actually a long-range plan? And you're just being led down the road to see what they want you to see the way they want you to see it. So I would assume they want my uh, anti-Semite side to see these four particular women, and specifically women too. This is the weirdest part about it. How could you not be a patriot and despise these four women in Congress, it doesn't make sense. You can, you could not respect them as politicians, and still wave your flag and you know suck Donald Trump's cock. It ain't gonna happen. One of them's got to go. So I think they're gonna drag these four women down the road for all this attention on this, and the, like the Area 51 thing, 
to keep us distracted from, well, they've got a Supreme Court justice that's not been seen in a period of time in public eye. Ginsburg still missing. <laughs> they got big decisions to make on that Supreme Court with eight. How do they do this? They got nine people on the goddamn seat, but they only got eight showing up for work, making decisions for 300 million plus people. And nobody says nothing. And what little bit they do say doesn't mean nothing. I don't see millions of people getting together or demanding a change. I see 30 people or 60 or 1,000 people complaining about a problem they created all by themselves, by voting. If you don't vote, it's not your problem. If you support it, it is your problem. If you don't support it, it is not your fucking problem. But what it is <laughs> you're stuck in this game somehow for a commerce transaction and these fucking thieves are gonna get it they're gonna take it from you by force if necessary but they're gonna fucking get it they're gonna use all their little tricky ways that they got to get you in the trap in the first place they got me through marriage oops <laughs> But it wasn't like a, I wasn't blindsided. I mean, shit. I knew what the fucking thing was when I saw it. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just recognizing for what it is. Society is a trap. And if you don't play in society, uh, what are the options? Well, I guess you can go uh, the Donna Van Meter route and plan to get yourself a little patch of land somewhere and live on it rough. And I respect the fuck out of that, but I don't think I have the, uh, I don't think I have the, the interest or the, uh, the knowledge enough to actually do it that that rough. It would it would be a I'd have to really, well, work on it. I think put a lot of effort into it. So, hmm. I think the inside living thing with the inside plumbing and all this kind of crap, indoor cooking. <laughs> and I've survived a couple of hurricanes, so, you know, I've done my share of living rough during, you know, periods of disaster. And, and looking back on it, you know, it was just, it happened. You know, I didn't panic or I just grabbed a tool and start cleaning up the mess. And <laughs> people were, people were sure different when things were bad rather than things were good. When things are good... Other people are a pain in the balls. And when things are seriously freaking bad, and I'm talking weather-wise, something catastrophic, all of a sudden, that neighbor you got you can't stand is your best friend and you're dependent on each other. And it's not something that you're going to learn in a book or you're not going to learn it on the internet. You're not going to hear it from somebody like me. It's going to either happen to you or it isn't. And if it already has, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm sure, like, Rob Works knows you've been through a hurricane or two, haven't you? Texas. Well, maybe not. I would say Rob's been through a disaster in his life. What has he got going on here? Uh, melt the fucking coin down and split it. There you go. Share and share like. See, Rob is not a greedy bastard. He's just not a stupid bastard. There's a difference. Greed is when you hurt people with money. And, you know, an old bastard, greedy, you know, just being an old bastard is just surviving. We all got to do that somehow or another. I wonder how that works. I don't think there's a way to measure a human life. I, other people really, oh, fuck. All, all my life I've noticed that. Oh, they got this. And, oh, they got that. And I don't see it that way. I really do not see me having this house. I don't see me having this wife or me having even the dog. I'm just involved in the life. You know, this is my part in this thing. <laughs> uh, hmm. Either you, that's it. I guess your belonging ability, you know, to recognize where you belong, whatever that is. It could be a place to some people. Some people fall in love with landscape or weather or me, people. Uh, I didn't even know I was all that fond of people. I thought I was pretty much finished with them years ago. 
but apparently not. I still like to have a conversation and uh, see where people's minds are about important, you know, important things in life, like how they feel about religion. And when they tell me, I don't ask them, they bring it up. That's even better. So when I hear things about Denmark being uh, more, they lean more to the agnostic. They use the word atheist, but I would say more agnostic of not really being able to say one way or the other rather than denying anything. They're just not for something they can't see. And that's my version of explaining what I was told. And that could be the farthest thing from what I was told. See, that's how life works for me. Is I hear the things I want to hear or I hear the things I don't want to hear so I can have the reaction that I want to have to that person's words. And it could be verbal or it could be uh, in print on a screen. It, it's the same, I think it's the same buzz. Maybe Rob's right about the wavelength. You know, there's some kind of a emotional thing to reacting to somebody's comment on the computer screen. I don't know. Anything's possible in life. It could be all nonsense. It could be all planned. It, it could be a combination of a lot of things. But depending on what I was taught about the particular subject has got to have something to do with how I see it in my, you know, today. And some things really don't matter. And some things do matter. Ah, they matter. But there's nothing I can, I'm uh, useless. There's no part I can play in fixing it. And I'm one of those people that wants this fixed. It can be repaired. This planet is not beyond repairing. It, what it's beyond is common sense and uh, honest information about things that are life-threatening. <laughs> like what you eat and drink and how they affect your ability to make up your own mind and not just go along with the first thing that you heard and believe it's a fact. Because... Hmm. Oftentimes, when I've done that, it ended in disaster. So, to those of you out there in Radio Land, I say do what you can live with. That's if you want advice, because uh, and well then says I, I give advice. Well, if I was going to give any advice, that would be it, because that's the code I live with. You know, if I can't live with myself doing something, then I don't do that. Like, uh, I couldn't live with myself if I went out and murdered somebody for no fucking reason. So I don't. I don't think I could live with myself if I murdered somebody for a reason. <laughs> uh, my wife even says, yeah, you don't strike me as, nah, because I'm easy with the animals, the ants, the bugs, the freaking plants. I've, I've found out in my older age that uh, I guess you soften if you let, you know, if you let it happen, it'll happen. If I was meant to be more difficult and more hard than I am, I guess it would have went that way, but it didn't. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it, Rob. It's not the planet. It's the people running things and the people taking orders from the people running. And the power is in the people and they just too ignorant to fucking get it. That's all there is to this. As a uh, collective, we're a group of fucking morons being led to shit by a bunch of dumbasses and thanking them. Oh, Mr. Trump, you're so fucking wonderful. No, he ain't. <laughs> and when that, we're going to get the fuck out of here on 20% off and call it a show. Thanks for playing along and sending me a link tonight, Rob. I appreciate the help. Always do. And anybody else out there in Radio Land that uh, participated in our little crazy shit tonight, uh, I had fun. And we're going to go with the uh, memory of the lineup on the reallibertymedia.com. And, oh, Chuck Ocelli has a channel 14. He's got his program on. Ah, still forget to read the title of his program because um, he's on five nights a week, by the way, on channel 14 on Real Liberty Media. And then, uh, let's see, tomorrow, is, this is Thursday, we got Wednesday and Friday at 7 o'clock on the East Coast in the PM, got Graham Z and her Rocket Chair podcast. Oh, and last night, me and Cirque stayed up for a podcast, 
And that was the first podcast I've ever heard Mary do in all these years that she didn't read one link. It was all just like one of the like a dork table. <laughs> we got Mary Dorkin all on her own. Anyway, Friday night, uh, we got Grim doing a balls to the wall. Moose is uh, out of town this week, right? Oh, yeah, you're welcome, Grimner. Thank you. Uh, we've got, uh, right, but you got balls to the wall on Friday at 11 on reallibertymedia.com. And then Saturday at noon, I'm going to be back with a dork table. Who knows? We'll see what happens. And then noon on Sunday, Grimner is going to play some blues. Then we're going to play some trivia. We show off our brains. And we compete for cash and valuable prizes. <laughs> Until Hale Anthony comes out from behind the woodshed with a big old can of whoop ass for the crickets and talk some sense into these crazy people. They sure need it, Hal. And Monday night, oh, that's at 3 o'clock, Hal Anthony is 3 o'clock on the West Coast on Sundays. And then on Monday night, 7 o'clock on the East Coast is Grimner does Grim Leftovers. And that'll be whatever he doesn't get to on Freaker's Balls to the Wall this week. He'll do on Monday night. And then Tuesday, I've got plans to do a 2 a.m. show on the East Coast. But things can change. I'll do the show as soon as I can get to it on Tuesday. It's called In a Perfect World. I do it with Vinny, but Vinny's not available, so we're all fucked up. <laughs> and then Grammy on Wednesday at 7 on the East Coast from a rocket chair. And then next week, I will be back with 20% off at 2 o'clock on the East Coast of the United States. So, I hope you had fun. I had a little bit of fun pontificating about my grand master plan to conquer the world. So, tune in next week for another thrill-packed, exciting episode of 20%.